Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Retorius FPV Wii Mix, which has two configurations with the motors above your camera, or using the included canopy you can have a much more traditional style. I use the iFlight 6X Micro F4 stack, which has a 12 amp 4 in 1 ESC, power switchable VTX from 25 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts, AMAX 1303 4000 kV motors, HQ 3x3x3 props. The first flight will come on these Gemfan Hurricane 3018 props. My FPV camera is the Runcam Nano 2. I also use this circular polarized micro antenna. I also flew it on these two 3S 450 milliamp batteries. I've used the 16x16 16 mounting. It also includes the 20x20, 20 20, and the production will include include mounting for WHOOP brushless boards. The bottom plate is 2mm thick. The arm thickness varies, but at the midpoint it's 8mm wide. The canopy structure is 2mm thick by 3mm thick. As I have mine built, it weighs just about 75 grams. With the GNB battery, it weighs just about 116 grams. With the tattoo battery, it weighs just a little bit less. You can see my battery there isn't quite full. It's pretty close, but a little bit off the edge. And uh, I started out with the Biblades. It's one of the things I wanted to kind of experiment with. And I think also if I were to have the funds and the time, I would probably go back and test some different motors just to see how it corresponds. Because I do think this one, I've over-motored this a little bit as far as the stator size. I think going with the 1204 motor might bring us a, a gram or two down in weight. And it also might, depending upon the 1204 motor, might bring us a little bit more efficiency. But I think with these bi-blades, the efficiency is pretty good. But I didn't like the fact that the bi-blades being clear, whenever you get the sun in there, I felt it was more distracting. Now, I'm going to show you the uh, tri-blades, the black props as well. I thought they were less distracting, and that's essentially why I'm including two different flights. Now, this in this configuration isn't necessarily a racing format, which is my forte, so you kind of have to look at what I'm doing and see if it fits, fits something that you would do. There's one bit that I kind of had to fly it quite a bit to get used to the fact that this isn't traditional. This is very unusual. This is new. This is thinking outside of the box to where you have the props and the motors overhead. And out of when I started the takeoff, each and every time I had this initial feeling that I was going to be pendulum swinging back and forth. But that's just not the case. That's I think it's a trick our eyes play on us or maybe flight experience plays on us when you have those motors overhead and the props and you kind of sense them all the time, even if you're able to zone in, that you kind of think you're going to be swinging back and forth, but you really don't. I bring that up because flight experience is a big part of this. This is not, as I said, a, a typical format that we've been following in quads. And I was excited to try this. Unfortunately, it takes me a very long time when it comes to doing custom builds. The build time, I'm not a fast builder by any stretch. Usually I build over the course of two nights, and during those two nights it means no editing, no recording, no other things that are involved with the channel stuff. Well, I might do comments, but nothing else outside of that. And we started with the by blades because I wanted to show you these because I think these are going to be the props. You're probably going to run, depending upon your motor, because it does take three inch props, when you flip it over and you have the traditional canopy, you can also run three inch props. Hopefully that's clear uh, by the quick roll and I showed you that canopy as well. I need to stress a little bit, if you missed it in the quick roll, that you will be able to use all of these brushless whoop boards that we've been seeing with their mounting pattern. Mine doesn't have it. This was kind of an early revision. They were trying to get out probably because they knew I, I am so terribly slow at doing these things. They're like, we gotta get him one because it'll be Christmas before he gets it done. And, I, I'm kind of pushing the envelope there on Christmas, but you will be able to use one of those boards. So if you have something that maybe you just want to try something new, so you head over to RotoriusFPV.com and you look pick up this frame, that you'll be able to transition something that you might already have if you have one of those boards. Of course, if you want to build fresh 16 by 16, 20 by 20, it fits all sorts of different stuff. And that kind of fits the motif of being able to fly it in this uh, unique manner with the motors and props overhead and then also being able to flip it over and fly in a traditional manner as well. And something that I learned is in Betaflight 4.1, we can adjust the percentage to that secondary de decimal point. So if you wanted to set your battery warning voltage at 3.45 per cell, you could do that, and I should have definitely done that. And now we come in at the end of the flight, we've got a, a three and a half minute flight, which is real good on a pretty small battery. And I think in freestyle flight, that's pretty reasonable. At least you can tell me if that's pretty reasonable. Let's get into the tri-blade prop flight. Okay, we're gonna start off. Uh, looks like my battery is about the same position, but we didn't get the OSD warning that the battery was less than full, but pretty close to the, the other one. This gives you an idea with this 
motor prop combination about flight time as well. We're only going to look at a sample of this uh, just because I don't think it's real important to see the entire flight. And uh, I wanted to show you the difference in props. I felt that even with the, essentially the same sun this time of year, that's about 3 o'clock sun. This might have been a noon flight. It's hard to say. But the sun doesn't really get high overhead uh, this time of year where I live. And you can see that I'm flying a little bit more aggressively, especially in the cornering. And tri-blades do give you a lot more grip in those corners, so you're able to hold your speed and carry your line a little bit better than bi-blades do. Uh, that's probably why we see most of those freestyle pilots using tri-blades uh, anymore. But I felt with the dark, thick, black props that it was less distracting to me when I was, especially when I had first flight. My first flight was always a bit of adjustment. You know, I've been flying so many um, traditionally mounted motor prop combinations over the last few years that this is very unique and it does take a bit of adjustment. But this gives you an idea in sun like this, the different in distraction levels if you're looking at that. This is the end of the flight. I just wanted to show you where the battery comes in and the end of the flight that we do get over three minutes still. The, the ending voltage comes in really close to the bi-blade flight prop, but we do get about 20 last second. So let's talk a little bit about the frame kit. Uh, it does come with all these pieces that you see that are 3D printed, including the canopy. You get both with your uh, purchase. It does come with the gold screws. I did find that I either put the screws in in the wrong order, but I used some of my screws for the top to make sure if you can see that they went all the way through and they would grab a little bit of the 3D print on top because I felt like the gold screws that it came with were about two millimeters short for my comfort level. Uh, so you do get screws that go through there, but I'm not certain either I put it together right or they're the right length for that particular position. Uh, the 3D print that holds our XT30 fits real nice. It does move around, as you might expect, when you have those batteries that really grip each other, but I really didn't have any troubles with it. Uh, the one thing I remember about the building was this area was something I really had to kind of be aware of and work on, especially when I tried to squeeze the capacitor in there. I put the capacitor in there from stock. You don't necessarily need it. Your flight, your, the, If you buy this flight stack, it will come with it. I would suggest going ahead and putting it on there. Doing this, I had to make sure my lead was the right length and that it was uh, flexible enough to get down through there because I also wanted to route my antenna through here. I, my antenna that I chose to use, I could have went with a linear, but I wanted to be able to use a circular polarized because linear is easy. Circular polarized might have been a little bit of a challenge, and I wanted to see what that experience was like with, you know, tumbling through a tree or something like that with this unique style that we've got here. So in order to shorten it, I co coiled it, and I put some heat shrink, and then I took my soldering iron and poked a hole in the heat in the heat shrink part, and then I put a zip tie through it to secure it down so that if this were to get caught in a tree, it would hang from there without putting any stress on the UFL connection that this stack does use. Another concern that you might have is that, you know, you're landing on this section all the time. And, and that does pose a bit of risk, but after I got to thinking about it a little bit, it doesn't really pose any more of a risk than, say, a traditionally mounted quad where you come in upside down, you know, when if you were to have this and exactly the opposite of it, you know, if you were to come down and crash, you know, if you had a rock that would fit between here, that it might still hit, in my case, the receiver or your flight stack. Uh, that is something to consider. Of course, if you mount it with the canopy, that is really not an issue. Uh, when I'm talking about having the same sort of consideration, I'm talking about a much more traditional, uh, like when, if any, if you're familiar with the, uh, the Leader 120, it was traditionally mounted, but it had kind of this uh, sort of design for carbon fiber to where, you know, something could get between there uh, if you had the right object, if you were to crash on it. But we also have holes up here. I use these holes throughout my wires. I'm not saying that's how you should do it, but that I thought was fairly convenient. That could have been what Carl, the designer, and thank you very much for sending this to me, Carl, had in mind for routing my wires through here. I thought it kept it nice and clean. Of course, you could wrap it around the edge and then come more traditionally through here uh, for direct access. I just put a little battery gummy in here to get clearance over the wires and over the screws, and that didn't really pose any issues. I did have a little bit of an issue when you put, excuse me while I reach across, when you put your battery in here, you really do have to get your battery kind of up to the camera edge, or the camera lens edge, and you do rest on those. Uh, so I think the bat the I think the screws that they include would be better because they're button head screws rather than these screws that are a little bit more abrasive as far as impact here. And you really can't run a bigger battery because when you put this thing on there, you've got to make sure you've got prop clearance all around. So you can't run the traditional square style of battery. You've got to run something in this narrow style. And then your 
lead management needs to be pretty good. Uh, basically, what I would do is just twist things up like this. I would plug it in, make sure things were kind of... I would actually just... If something clipped, like if I rotated the props, if something clipped, I would just push it out of the way. And I didn't have any problems with these wiggling or moving back in the way because, again, this end is secured down. Oh, but I would do it this way. Sorry, I had that wrong. I wanted this up out of the way of the prop line, and I would twist this up, as you can see, this battery, and then I would plug it in like this. Well, I'd get more twist in there. Jeez Louise, come on. Get more twist in here. Plug it in, and then I would just push the wire out of the way if it happened to be clipping. But it is something that you need to be aware of. In this format, you have a limit on the size of the battery that you can run. And therefore, maybe using this size of motor was a poor choice in my case. But I wanted to test these motors out, and this was an opportunity to do that. I should point out that you do get what we oftentimes will, well, they're standoffs, but in this case, they're not used in a traditional manner that are in all three positions. And those are metal, so you don't have to worry about getting nylon and those being flimsy. Of course, metal does have a little bit more weight and beef to it, uh, but that's something that you have to choose. You do get the screws back here that you see to mount your rear, your uh, battery lead connection down. That does come in the kit as well. And that 3D print has a recess to grab the nut, although you will need to uh, secure that nut down for the most part using some needle nose or something of that nature because the 3D print won't hold it enough to where you can really put much pressure on it. The nut will rotate in there. Yeah, it was a unique experience and pretty fun. I enjoy trying new things and new tinkering. And if you're like me and you want to try something out, you can check out RetoriusFPV.com. And even if you aren't interested in this particular frame, Retorius FPV has a host of other frames. They've got five inch frames, they've got micro frames. Uh, you should go and check them out. Now a question for you. What do you think of something like this? What did you think of the flight? What do you think of the limitation of the battery? What role would that play in your purchase choice? This is an opportunity when you have independent, smaller market designers that we can give some additional feedback of the direction they might be moving. So leave your comment down below. If you have any other questions, comments, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in that section down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.